Crypto.com just made a major announcement. They reduced their popular Crypto.com cards reward. Then I think a lot of us are wondering at this point in time, is the Crypto.com still worth it? So let's talk about the changes, my experience with Crypto.com card. Um, how is it like for the past six months? Because I just finished my staking. I was thinking of upgrading and now I'm having second thoughts. Um, we're going to compare what are some of the available alternatives for my Singaporean friends and the ultimate question at the end of the day is is the Crypto.com card actually still worth it at this point in time? Alright, so first let's talk about what are the changes for those of you who don't know because I only found out about it I think two days ago so I was a little late to the party a lot of people already knew about it and was telling me like hey Gerald, the sell-off is going to happen Alright, so let's pop up the table Pop! All right, so basically what they've done is that the cashback has been reduced across the board from as much as 3% to as little as 1%. So the higher your tier, the more the reduction is, which is kind of painful considering the fact that I was just thinking about upgrading my card. Uh, so 3% is a lot. 1% um, is very little, but if you only have a 1% cashback, it's kind of, you know, it takes away all the cashback. So that kind of stinks. So not only did they, did they reduce the cashback, they also implemented a cap. You know, it used to be unlimited. Even you buy like $20,000 worth of furniture with the Crypto.com card from IKEA Deep, you get the cashback right now. Nope, there's a cap of $25 and $50 and it's unlimited if you're of the higher tier. That sounds a, that's a little hard to wrap your head around. So I created this new column, which is the max amount of money you can spend until you no longer get any cashback. And the amount is about, you know, starting from $3,300, uh, Singapore dollars, my friends. So that's about the amount you can spend to get the maximum cashback. Beyond that, you don't get any cashback. Then all of you might be wondering why, why, why does Crypto.com need to do this? Well, in the first place, the rewards was, in my opinion, extremely good. And why was it extremely good? I think they were subsidizing it to attract new people on board. So if you are the early bird, you got in early, you know, because of the earlier videos of mine that you watch, you would have gotten a great deal. And I'm afraid that number is not sustainable because if they keep giving out a lot of crow tokens, you know, more than what people are using, what happens is that this creates selling pressure. So people would sell the excess crow that they have because they want to, you know, get more cash, right? Because it's fantastic cash back. So that creates a problem in which the price of crow keeps going down. So by reducing this emission or reducing the supply, therefore, if demand remains the same, supply reduces, then, you know, the price of crow technically should go up. But the problem is right now, people are kind of taken aback with how much they actually do so the demand might not actually stay the same it might also drop so what happens to crow price i have absolutely no idea but so a couple of changes a week later crypto.com actually gave a further update on its previous update in which they actually revised their rates upwards for those that stake and reduce um, unstake downwards and that's from you know the community feedback that they received and obviously it's overwhelmingly negative because at um 1.5% it loses out to a lot of your regular credit card rebates so now that they bump up let's say the 5,000 tier to 2% now crypto.com remains at this moment the best cashback card up to a cap of $2,500 max spend because that's when you get the max cashback so this changes a lot of things additionally they also made this very very special statement in which if you stake by the end of this month which is the 31st you get to enjoy your previous 10% stake, sorry, 10% um, staking returns and um, the full cashback, which means 3% cashback if you stake by the end of 31st May 2022. So with that opportunity, I'm gonna just go ahead and stake the tier and get my wife um, a crypto.com $5,000 tier card as well, because this really changes things. Let's not talk about that in this video. Let's talk about my experience with using Crypto.com Visa card as a product. So I just finished uh, my Crypto.com card the past six months. And honestly, I was thinking of two different options, right? I was thinking of whether I should split it up so that my wife and I can become Crypto.com Indigo buddies, you know, so we both have the same card or uh, top up a little bit more to upgrade um, to the next tier. So that became a little bit harder with this new um, reward system. But apart from that, actually my experience with the Crypto.com card has been mostly 
really delightful. Like it's really easy to top up with my Revolut card. Um, payment has been smooth, and conversion rates are like seriously, seriously good. And this is in light of the fact that we can now travel overseas. Because when I went overseas, I actually did a small test using like different cards um, to withdraw. And you know, like I went to Malaysia to visit my relatives. I withdrew like bring it. So it turns out crypto.com has like the best exchange rate and they charge no fees for overseas ATM withdrawal. It's like insane. Just this feature alone makes it totally worth it for me to continue, you know, keeping my crypto.com card. So I'm going to talk about that in a video next week. So subscribe or just check out the video in the corner over here when it's out. It's seriously awesome, the crypto.com card when you use it overseas. Commercial rate, mwah! but it lacks in something else because while the conversion rate is good, it doesn't have a lot of functions. Um, number one, you can't add it to Google Pay. So if you want to use your watch to kind of pay or use your phone to pay for public transport or cards, you can't get a convenience. You kind of need to take out the card from your wallet in order to pay. That's one. Number two, they in Singapore in particular, they do not work well with international um, companies like like payments that are processed out of this country, which is almost a lot of the things that we use today like your amazon is not processed in singapore your spotify is not processed in singapore your alibaba you know you're gonna buy the cheap um, products on alibaba or Taobao, they're not processed in singapore the payment process is overseas and therefore crypto.com just flat out doesn't work and it's extremely frustrating because you don't know what doesn't work and what works so then you would top up convert it to us dollars and then try to pay and then boom it fails and then you're like what happens to all my money, you know? They're stuck there because you can't actually cash out because you can't use crypto.com to withdraw from the ATM in Singapore. But if you're overseas, I think you can use the ATM withdrawal and that kind of, you know, gives you a means of cashing out or withdrawing the money. So that's not that bad. Then this brings me to the next point, which is alternatives, right? Because it used to be like 3% limitless cashback, which is like super attractive. So I own the Indigo or Jade Green tier and Back then, it used to be a 3% limitless cashback and it was crazy, especially during the time where I was doing like a home renovation, we would spend like thousands and thousands in IKEA products and 3% cashback is a lot because like for my typical credit card, it's like um, capped at $50 and it was very quick. Like if you spend like $10,000 on, you know, furnishing and stuff, um, you very quickly hit the figure and you know, no, there's no more cashback. But um, with crypto.com, you can get like hundreds of dollars of cashback, which was ridiculous. But all that has changed because now they've dropped it to 1.5%, which then brings in a lot of other competition. Namely, the UOB Absolute, which has like a 1.7% cashback, limitless cashback, and also the Amex True Cashback card at 1.5% unlimited cashback. The only downside to these two cards is that they are a lot less widely accepted in Singapore. So that's a small hassle. Um, with regards to using those cards, but there's still more than the Indigo tier that Crypto.com provides. So if you haven't signed up for a true cashback card or the Absolute card, you might want to start doing that right now. I'm going to have a link in the description below. It helps this channel at no cost to you. I think they're having a small promotion right now. Alternatives aside, let's talk about is this card actually still worth it? So I've used it for six months. I'm going to share with you my honest um, experience and feedback and you decide you know based on the facts of what are the changes and, and my own experience you decide whether is it worth to upgrade or you know get the card in the first place I'm also going to add on like one of my biggest worry when it comes to upgrading the card and that's why I'm kind of holding off and you let me know what you think you know whether you agree with my thoughts or not so I'm going to start by saying when I upgraded from you know instead of the Ruby I got the Indigo tier the airport lounge is fantastic now travel restrictions in Singapore is completely or almost completely lifted and it's fantastic now i can visit that place a lot more times just for fun yeah. the 200 dollars worth of um spotify and netflix is awesome so there's a total of like 400 dollars a year but there's two caveats to this right first is that given that they can reduce the rewards there's no telling when they might actually just take back the spotify or the netflix of the deal the second part is that I don't really use or need to buy a Spotify or Netflix account for my own. So for Spotify, you need to subscribe to the Ruby tier, um, which is nice. I think uh, it's $200 cashback, right? So that's almost half in a year, assuming they don't uh, take back the rewards. But the thing is that me and my wife actually share a Spotify account with a couple of other friends. I think it was a pro family bundle of some sort. I mean, it was what, 99 cents per person? much cheaper so she just signed up and i use the account i don't really play spotify for myself so it doesn't appeal to me 
and for the Netflix per like if you got attracted or you know enticed by it so did I but I, I, when I signed up for it I realized that the cashback that, that they provide is actually the lowest tier so the lowest tier only gives you SD like 480p um, definition of Netflix which is horrendous if you try to play it on your TV you know, imagine playing 480 YouTube on your TV just just terrible so you end up having to subscribe for the higher tier which you actually have to fork out cash off of your pocket and we all know Netflix provide this family sharing account so again my relatives actually have a family for five you know the, the, the Netflix family so then I just take one of the account and I chip in like a few bucks it's much cheaper than upgrading the food plan for just for myself which then again defeats this perk so as a jade green tier user myself I'm kind of bumped out because I realized that I don't really need to stick my crow tokens to enjoy the key perks which is the overseas exchange um, rates and feelers um, withdrawals that's the perk I really enjoy and I and the airport lounge I don't really need to stick for those perks and this brings me to my biggest fear and that is are other users actually feeling bumped out the way I do about the staking rewards and if they are, are they gonna sell? I, I know that a lot of people are like locked in right for like three, six, depending on where they are in the cycle. But the question is, once they are done with the cycle, are they gonna sell out? If they are, then this makes me very fearful to upgrade from you know um to the, the, the five thousand tier to like the fifty thousand tier. Because imagine if Crow drops like ten percent or twenty percent, that's like ten thousand dollars off. No amount of uh, free Spotify is gonna make up for that. But um if like for my wife, if I do get you know, like a ruby tier for her instead of the indigo tier that I plan. Say she gets you know five hundred dollars stake and she gets two hundred dollars um, in cash back from the free Spotify every single year. It kind of makes sense, even if it drops, you know, like a good 20, 30 percent, and kind of make our money back. In fact, we probably you know get really good cash back. So now it really makes me wonder if, or it makes me very hesitant to. Uh, really upgrade for myself I don't know if you think the same way too let me know what you think because right now the new cashback rates unless you are upgrading to like the 50,000 here it's mostly kind of so that's what I think um, let me know what you think I hope they will kind of find ways to make it even more attractive otherwise I'm not very optimistic about um, using the card for day-to-day -day use I will still use it for overseas because it's beautiful in that sense so let me know what you think in the comment section below and if you want to find out which card is the best for overseas use check out my video over here it also includes a bit of a flashback of me traveling to visit my relatives after years of wait because of the COVID lockdown or check out what YouTube recommends you over here. And in the meantime, stay safe and take care everyone.